uh, recent, recently of not wanting to be consolidated, but rather to be the consolidator. Yes. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, that's the that's the other thing we want to do is I believe, and I again, you look back at industry as a whole. The, the best example I like to give is the restaurant industry. There, I think there's mm. a lot of parallels at the restaurant industry and the skilled trades industry. The restaurant industry, if you go back to 19, let's go back to the end of World War II, late, late 40s, early 50s. What was the restaurant industry? It was extremely fragmented. Mm -hmm. You did not have hardly any. I mean, McDonald's was getting it was getting going and whatnot, and you started to see some nationwide hamburger joints. Mm -hmm. You started to see some nationwide consolidation of restaurants to where you had right. a McDonald's in Florida and a McDonald's in. I'm using McDonald's as the example, but you had a restaurant in California and a restaurant in Florida that were the same. Mm -hmm. And fast forward to the 70s and 80s. You had massive consolidation. You, that's where you had chilies popping up all over the place. Prior to, I mean, you go back to 1980. Mm -hmm. I wasn't alive yet, but I, I, I love to study this stuff, and so I can, I can imagine. Mm -hmm. You go back to 1980 or 1975, and most restaurants were still locally mm -hmm. owned, and were, you know, you might have two or three branches, and that's you know, two or three or four or ten locations, but that was about the extent. Mm -hmm. And what you've seen in the restaurant industry in the last 80 years is massive consolidation to where now it's almost all big companies. Yeah. I mean, you still have a lot of, of small and, and one-off lo locations. The, the restaurant right. industry is still very much so healthy in that regard. But you also have a huge amount of consolidation. And not only do you have a lot of chilies and a lot of Olive Gardens and a lot of Red Lobsters, you name them. Sure. But what also has happened is most of those are owned by one or one to three different giant conglomerates. Mm -hmm. I use that as an example. It's the natural way of business. It's yeah. the natural way business tends to consolidate. The more evolved an industry becomes, the bigger it becomes, mm -hmm. the more it consolidates. Technology is going to do that to the skilled trades industry. See, it hadn't happened yet for the skilled trades industry because of technology. Mm -hmm. It had. There were certain barriers limitations. and limitations technology is gradually making that happen more and more mm -hmm. do some quick research you can look up whether you're the, the big tech companies the companies that have basically uh not to say infinite but dang near infinite resources mm -hmm. they are doing their they are doing a lot and putting a lot of resources in trying to get into the skilled trades <laughs> because they see how fragmented it is mm -hmm. and they see technology as being a solution right I believe that Chorby and, and our organizations are going to be consolidators, not consolidated. Mm -hmm. We want to be part of the consolidation, and that's why we're focused, and that's why we talk so much about expanding the, our, our organization yeah. through additional skilled traits. Right. Man, that's some really good perspective uh, and information that I, I previously didn't have, so it helps, like I said, put things yeah, in perspective. Yeah, we didn't talk in that depth. That we not, haven't talked Not much too much, that. no. That was really good. But you can look at it in lots of different industries. I use the restaurant. Sure. Lots of industries consolidate, and you end up seeing consolidators, and you see those that get consolidated. Yeah. We are looking to be a consolidator. Mm -hmm. We're looking for the long term. That genuinely like fires me up and gets me excited. That's awesome. I, it gets me excited. It also gets me nervous because right. I don't exactly know how that works. And that's why I <laughs> wanted to move into our next question. You mentioned technology being a, a potential limitation. What other challenges are we potentially facing? Uh, in, in technology to... is huge. Yeah. Um, I mean, everybody that is listening to this can probably relate. The CRM, the, the, the programs we use, are, are we all love to hate them. Right. Um, know that that is actually not unique to just our organization. Mm -hmm. Generally, everybody hates the systems they use. Sure. It's, it's a, it's a love-hate relationship with technology that we all have. But technology is a huge challenge. Um, manpower. Uh, obviously, it's no secret that, that uh, finding skilled talent, mm -hmm. finding good people that are, that are anxious and hungry and eager to work and eager to learn and and eager to grow, that is, that's hard to find yeah. these days. And especially because this industry is not the most glamorous industry. Skilled trades of sure. any kind, whether it's pet waste removal, whether it's lawn technicians, or even plumbers. I was raised, I'm a child of the 90s is what I would probably say, and I was raised not to go and become a plumber to get a, to learn a skilled trade. I was learned to 
you're going to grow up and you need to go to college, mm-hmm. which is laughable because plumbers make more than most anybody that went to college. <laughs> <laughs> but, and they're necessary and yeah. they're economy proof because yeah. whether, you know, we just had a plumbing situation in my house here uh, where we're, where, where we're in the back, where we're in my garage at my house, as you know, but, but, um, but in my house, we just had a plumbing issue. Mm-hmm. Well, regardless of how bad the economy is, regardless of the cost, I was calling that. They're going to be there. They're going to be there, and they're mm-hmm. and they're going to get paid. Yeah. Um, and so I think manpower is definitely a challenge. I think that some of the things and some of our approaches, I think, help with that. We don't personally see a lot of the manpower challenges that I think a lot of companies, because we we try to we, we try to uh, uh, do right by our team members, mm-hmm. and so that helps. Um, now that doesn't mean it's perfect. We could all sure. we always have manpower sure. challenges, but uh, manpower communication. Mm-hmm. as a whole my wife has a degree very similar to your to your degree it's about corporate communications i think that's literally the name of her degree is corporate communications i sometimes joke with her that she literally has the college degree to what my daily challenge is and that is <laughs> corporate communications how yeah. how and what and when and where we communicate mm-hmm. within our organization you know i don't think a day goes by that I hear of somebody not knowing something that they probably should have known. Mm-hmm. But then at the same time, how do you combat that without hitting reply all to everything <laughs> or adding the entire company's email right. in, you know, to, and, and then, then you're blowing up everybody's inbox and nobody can get any work done. And so finding that balance of communication mm-hmm. is, is a challenge. And the, 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 the bigger our organizations get and the more that they evolve, the more I recognize that is no wonder there's an entire college degree with that right. i mean my goodness it, it is a it is a serious challenge for mm-hmm. organizations to be able to figure out how to properly communicate and convey yeah. their mission their vision mm-hmm. their mindsets not to mention the day-to-day procedural right. tasks and that sort of thing so co- corporate communications is a big i'm doing my best man no you're doing fantastic <laughs> You're doing fantastic, but again, you're a perfect example. How often, how often you could probably give an example. I don't, I don't want to give. How an often do you not know of something? You're like, well, I it would have been helpful mm. if I'd have known that. And it's like, yeah. dang it, Ben should have known that. Yeah. And um, and, and, and yeah, we, we drop the ball on that all the time. There's ample room for improvement sure. there. But sure. I, I also think that that's going to be a constant battle. No matter what yeah. we do, there's always going to be, um, always going to be that's going to always be a challenge. Um. And look, the unknown, you know, the, 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 and I don't have this in my notes. I'm really just scrolling through here, but mm-hmm. as, I'm, as I'm talking here. But uh, also with technology, as I mentioned technology, because everything changes so fast in today's world, I mean, you just look back two mm-hmm. years and you'd think it's been a decade. And then you look back a decade and, and you think back a decade ago, these smartphones were just barely doing anything. So technology is progressing, and it'll continue to progress at such an exponential rate. So I mentioned technology already, but I mentioned it more in the context of our of our CRM and our day to day use. Mm-hmm. The other thing is the fact that everything changes. Mm-hmm. I listened to the other day. I forget. Uh, actually, it was a Simon Sinek, The Infinite Game. Uh, I'm enjoying that book in a lot of ways. Uh, but he talks about how 150 years ago. I'm going to butcher this, but it's close. 150 years ago. The average lifespan, or the average, uh, yeah, the average lifespan of a company was sixty years. The average lifespan of a company today is like seven, or ten, or something wow. crazy. Interesting. Maybe it was eighteen. It was way lower. Yeah. Um, and that's why is that? There's one answer: technology. Hmm. Technology speeds everything up. Yeah. If you if you're unable to uh, adapt understand and adapt and pivot mm-hmm. to remain competitive yeah i can imagine you're exactly. gonna falter exactly and that's where the the, the need to continually educate yourself mm-hmm. i was just i got a call and, and, and uh langlitz and i have to actually make this decision on monday uh but I, I i was advertised and it actually seemed appealing to me but it's a technology class from it's an online class but it's a technology focused class from berkeley university hmm. and i initially thought berkeley <laughs> So again, I love and I and I shrug off education. Sure. I love, but on the other hand, I love education. But yeah, I, I'm I'm tempted for myself and or Langlitz to take this course mm-hmm. because it teaches us. On one hand, you look at some of the things and it's like, why do we need to know those things? I mean, it's talking about they're, one of the things they're going to talk about is blockchain, hmm. and it's like, well, why do we need to know about that? 
well, I don't know because I have no freaking clue what blockchain is <laughs> other than it has something to do with Bitcoin and digital yeah. currency. But should I know about it? Because some of the things I read, it's like, this is the future, mm -hmm. whatever that means. So staying, keeping yeah. yourself educated on those things uh, is, is extremely important. Uh, and then the last thing I'll mention is maintaining culture. Mm -hmm. You know, even in the last year, I have seen how we have really, as we've begun, land, begun laying this foundation, we have become a lot more corporate in a lot of ways. And that scares the crap out of me on one hand because mm -hmm. we have to figure out how to build and grow a corporation, mm -hmm. the bad word in a lot of ways, instead of a small business. We, we, we've got to build a corporation, but we've got to figure out how to maintain the culture yeah. and maintain that small business atmosphere. Mm -hmm. um, the best influence I can give to that is Hobby Lobby Chick-fil-A. <laughs> big corporations, big corporate businesses that have figured out how to maintain their, their culture all the way down to the micro-individual. Yeah. It's industry. very clear values that, values. that do not values waver. Values-based leadership that does not waver. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Good, good, good comment. Good point. That's what I'm here for. That's exactly, but that's exactly right. Well, um, We've kind of already touched on this a little bit, but I just want to give you an opportunity. Is there any other uh, thing that you can think of, uh, of how we can overcome any potential challenges? In a single sentence, mm -hmm. and I love this. I stole this from, uh, from Josh Cahill, my beloved business partner, but I think he stole it because if you go back and look at the history, there's actually, there's actually a lot. But mm -hmm. growth always in all ways. Mm -hmm. That's the answer to these challenges. Yeah is we have to constantly be obsessed and focused on, again, what's that, the vision. Mm -hmm. We gotta keep our, kind of our true eyesight. north, keep our eyesight, uh, our true north, if you will. Um, but grow, we've gotta be focused on that growth mm -hmm. in all ways, all ways. I love that because, of, you know, the play. What, Say what it five they times call fast. That? Growth always in all ways. Growth always in all ways. Growth always in all ways. <laughs> Growth always. I did it. That was four, but I can that's do it. That's close enough. Yeah, that's great. Always I wouldn't always. have been able to do it. Always and always. That's great. And I'm going to be saying that tonight, just sitting here thinking, always and always. <laughs> I think I'm going to start adding it to my daily emails. I, I, that's a great idea. Uh, that was actually not a joke. I think I actually might no, do I that. No, I think you should. Um, so with that in mind, you know, the, it's often uh, there's a balance between our leadership has to take ch has to champion. Uh, these things of growing and adapting and, and remaining competitive, but the same thing can be uh, easily communicated and applied to everyone else that works for yes. these organizations. So with that in mind, how are we going to continue this um, for our employees at Torby and Scoop Soldiers? How can they be involved in the future of uh, making this vision come to life? Um, first off, you've got to be hungry. You've mm -hmm. got to care. If you don't care, you're probably not going to win. Hmm. You have to care. You have to care about, you just have to care. Uh, and, yeah. and again, I'm not talking about our team. I'm talking about just in general. It, it, it's, there's so many distractions. Again, hmm. it, it's the give and the take of the, the blessing of technology. Yeah. We have so much technology to distract us while there's also ample opportunity through that technology. But you have to, you, you can't, you can't go through the motions in the day-to-day -day without caring. You have to care. Mm -hmm. From caring, you have to begin to get hungry. See, I go back, and I think back when I was a, when I was a teenager and when I was a, a young 20-something. Everybody was interested in what they were doing that night. <laughs> I was a weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> I cared so much about ensuring my future success that I almost obsessed. I was hungry. I was, mm -hmm. I was starving for it. Mm -hmm. Didn't necessarily make for having a great uh, uh, social, life. social life, but, um, but it, 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 made, it was good for success. And I do believe you can have both, by the way. Sure. I mean, yeah. Mr. Cahill is a good example. He had both. Mm -hmm. He had a much better social life than I did as he, as he was growing up. But, um, but no, you've got to be hungry. Mm -hmm. You've got to be hungry. You've got you've to you've have a little bit of confidence in yourself, but also in your team. Mm -hmm. uh, faith. Uh, since I already quoted scripture once, I'll quote my favorite scripture, Hebrews 11.1. 1. It's actually right there. <laughs> Hebrews 11.1. 1. Uh, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Mm -hmm. Well, let's break that down. What is faith? 
has nothing to do with Christianity or not. It has faith is the substance of things hoped for. Mm -hmm. In other words, you're hoping for something. You got a vision. Right. The evidence of things not seen, and, uh, and, and so it's it, there's evidence. There's evidence of the things in the foundation we're laying, sure. what the future will hold. But it's you've got to have a little bit of faith, mm -hmm. uh, and you've got to have a little bit of faith to move forward in, yeah. in that. Does that answer that? Yeah, that's great, man. That was awesome. Yeah. Well, um, EJ, uh, is there anything else you want to bring up in terms of vision and mission and our team's involvement uh, with that? Anything else you can think of? You can well, say we no. We just talked a lot about We did so talk I, a lot. I, I mean, take, take it serious. Mm -hmm. Again, another going back to that caring, take it seriously. Mm -hmm. Think about your future. Yeah. People don't think about their future enough. They think a lot about the past and the now. I don't think people think about the future. I personally need to do the opposite. I think too much about the future, and, and, and I tend to yeah. daydream a, a whole lot. Um, I think some of my uh, – if you go back and look at what my teachers wrote in my yearbooks is uh, – I think my wife says that she was a teacher. You're a space cadet is what she calls me because <laughs> I was always that kid that was just sitting in class thinking. I was thinking – Mm -hmm. Actually, I remember in elementary school, I was thinking I was, you know, you'd have this big elementary school. I'd be daydreaming. I wonder, what would I do if this was my house? <laughs> <laughs> I literally, I spent a lot of days oh, in elementary school hilarious. just daydreaming, looking at those, <laughs> looking at those old digital clocks, just thinking like, I would have the library as my bedroom. <laughs> It's the biggest, you know, it's the biggest. Right. Most Anyways, open. Elementary school, so elementary funny. school, uh, EJ ambitions is what that was. <laughs> but no, That's good. Great. Thank you for, thank you for putting this together. Yeah. And, um, I appreciate, I appreciate the, uh, I appreciate the back and forth. Yeah. That's what we, that's the what conversation. We're doing here. Well, uh, everyone, thank you so much for joining. Again, I really hope that you were able to take something tangibly from this conversation and let it inform your actions moving forward, whether that be taking the time to stop and evaluate uh, what, what do you want for yourself and, and recognize that Chorby and Scoop Soldiers can help you along your journey. We want that for you. We believe in you and want you to, do, you to also be a part of where we're going in the future. And I hope you recognize that here today. So, again, thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you on the next time. And as always, work hard, work smart, and make it a great day. And growth always in, in all ways. ways.